dealing with high pressure situations is something we have all come across in life, but rather than struggling in such circumstances, it is possible for all of us to deal with them in a way which not only produces the best results, but gives others a positive perception of us. Now, the approach I've used in this video to try and break down the tips is to reverse engineer what happens when our body is under stress, and take steps to prevent the negative reactions we often have to help deal with the situation in a way that's positive. So with that in mind, what happens when you're in a high pressure situation and you're struggling to cope with it? Well, some of the key responses are, your breathing becomes shallow and quicker. Physically, your posture will close up into a defensive position. You will often speak or respond quickly, and you can feel unprepared, or specifically, you can feel as though you've been caught off guard. By focusing in on each of these areas and taking steps to change them, you'll change your mental and physical state to help you cope with a high pressure situation. So let's go into each and understand what you can do to help you feel less pressured. Control your breathing It goes without saying that our breathing patterns often play a large role in our state. Usually when feeling stressed or pressured, our natural physical response is to take more shallow and quicker breaths. However, taking deep and slow breaths will help you relax in any given situation, and this is no different when under pressure. It's easy to forget your breathing patterns in such situations, but doing so is counterproductive to what you need to achieve and want to portray. So, follow a simple breathing exercise in such circumstances, which is to take a deep breath into your stomach for 4 seconds, hold it in for 4 seconds, and then release, again for 4 seconds. If you can focus on doing this a number of times in a pressure situation, it will work extremely well in calming down. However, let's say it's hard to do this as an exercise. You should spend a second or two regulating your breathing patterns to take slower deep breaths in the situation. You see, your breathing is critical in stress response, so by taking deeper breaths, you control it in a way that's in line as if you're in a relaxed state. When you take such breaths, you increase your carbon dioxide intake, which helps your physical response to help you calm down. It's for this reason that when people hyperventilate, they are often recommended to take a little time to breathe into a paper bag. However, that's not all you should do to change your state. Change your posture Our posture plays a significant role in both our state of being and the perception others have of us. When we feel pressured or stressed, our natural response is to often close up and have a more defensive posture. A good example of this is we naturally cover up our body with our arms or cross them. When you want to relax in a high pressure situation, learn to do the opposite, which is open up your arms, stand tall or sit straight, hold your chin slightly up and push your chest out. As we saw with breathing deep, if we change our physiology, we naturally go against the body's stress response. When you change your posture, you send signals to the brain that you're feeling okay, even confident. However, it's not just about the message you send to your brain, but equally the signals you send to others, as you want to give the perception of someone who is confident and in control, someone strong and stable. Physiology plays a huge role in how we cope with high pressure situations, but it's not the only factor. For example, you always need to take time to think. Think about it this way. Think back to a difficult circumstance and think through how quickly you'd respond to others. Perhaps they were asking difficult questions, or maybe accusing you of something. I guarantee that you probably responded quickly to what was asked or said, not always giving time to think through the response. Now let's be honest, we're all guilty of this, I know I definitely am. The thing is, taking your time to respond and affording yourself time to think is actually critical in keeping a calm head in a pressure situation. So be sure to think through what you say before speaking, use the opportunity to take a couple of deep breaths. 
This is also something many highly considered leaders do on a constant basis. They take a few seconds to think through their responses, especially because they know the weight of their words. Another example with a good leader is that if they share their opinions or decisions, they afford those they lead time to share their own thoughts first. Doing this will allow the leader to not only pull some of their own thoughts together, but to actually understand the views and opinions of those they lead, which might influence their own decisions. Be prepared. Planning and preparation is critical to building success in any circumstance. As the infamous saying goes, by failing to prepare, be prepared to fail. Preparation is always possible, and it shouldn't be just to prepare how you want things to go, but also what you will do if and when they don't. By doing this, you can prepare for circumstances to deal with them in a way that's positive. For example, say you're in the middle of a date and you have a moment of the dreaded awkward silence. For most of us, we're often unprepared in how to deal with such a situation. However, if you have planned for it in advance, and considered how you will deal with the situation should it arise, you're much more likely to engage it in a positive way should it occur, not only resulting in a win for you, but equally for the person who you're with, who probably wants to avoid awkward silences just as much as you do. And there's a little secret to all of this which is that most people are driven by process. Since young, we're conditioned to understand what's accepted in different social or professional situations, and most people like to stick to these conventions. For example, in any situation, it's pretty much always the case to introduce yourself when meeting someone for the first time, usually followed up by asking how the person is. In the instance someone doesn't follow this protocol, which is simply considered common courtesy, it can reflect badly on them, or at least add some uncertainty to the situation, as it's not what's expected, bringing in an element of chaos. So learn the process of different situations, understand what's socially accepted and what's not, so that you can try to adhere to them and keep a calm situation. As you learn and grow more familiar with the processes, you can begin to understand when and how to introduce elements of surprise and intrigue should the situation call for it, such as the aforementioned date. By applying these steps, you'll soon learn that coping with high pressure situations aren't as challenging as they might first appear, and rather, that you're much more deserving of credit than you might give yourself credit for. If you found this of value, I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel for more helpful tips and advice. Be sure to turn on the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads. Thanks for watching.